Okay, this page we're going to understand now why we needed to know that discriminant stuff because maybe we're doing it going, huh, I don't care whether it has one solution, two solution. Well, what we're going to learn in this section, well, same section, but this part of the 7.2 is that the determinants tell us about the graph. So when we had the positive cases where it was either two real rational or two real irrational solutions, what that means is those two real roots mean two x intercepts. And remember, parabolas go on forever. So roots are just x intercepts. So anytime they're real, that means they're on the number line. Then when we had the negative radical in the last second means that there were two imaginary solutions. Well, there aren't any imaginary numbers on my x-axis. So when something has two imaginary solutions, that means it's never going to cross the x-axis because there aren't imaginary numbers on the x-axis. So the parabola could go up like that, or it could go down like this, right? Here it crossed the x-axis twice with imaginary solutions. It won't ever cross the x-axis because there aren't any imaginary numbers on the x-axis. And then the double root, when we got 0, I told you that meant that it was a turning point on the graph. And you can see it's a turning point on the parabola, too. We're going to learn this turning point. It's called the vertex. It's coming up in this chapter. But one double root means you got the same answer twice. 3, x equals 3, and x equals 3. So whenever, or in this case, it'd be x equals 1 and x equals 1. So anytime you get the same number twice, that means it only has one x-intercept because it's the same number. So a double root translates to one x-intercept. So imaginary, no x-intercepts. Positive radical tells us that it will have two x-intercepts. And then just a reminder to find y-intercepts, because this next section is going to tell us uh, y-intercepts are when you make x equal 0. And why is that? Because every point on the y-axis has x equals 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. So to find it algebraically, you just plug 0 in for all the x's, and that's how you find the y-intercept. So what we're doing is gearing up. I have these two 10-point problems on the test. If you printed your practice test, you'd see that. Um, and they have us find the vertex, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the axis of symmetry, the domain, the range. So we're just starting to put the pieces together. So this has two of those pieces on it, x-intercept, y-intercept. Oh, and then it also has the graph on the test. So they're two big... 10 pointers because that's really what our whole class is about trying to find the x-intercepts that means solving a quadratic equation which we know how to do by factoring quadratic formula completing the square square root property so we're going to use all those to help us find the x-intercepts so solve that that finds the x-intercepts for the y-intercept like we wrote above that means make x zero so put your zeros in and then we can start seeing the graph come to, because if you have two x-intercepts on a graph and a y-intercept, you can kind of start drawing the picture. So find the discriminant. So we do the same thing we did in the last section. A is 1, B is 2, C is negative 8. And discriminant remembers B squared minus 4AC. So we do 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 8. So 4 times a times c. And then, like I said before, type that into your calculator so you don't make any sign errors. So we have 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 8. And that's 36. And that is a perfect square. So that means there's two real rational roots.
But what that means from the chart above, two real rational roots translates to two x intercepts. And that's what the question is asking, I believe. Let's look and see. You find the determinant. So there was the determinant. That was step one. Use it to determine if there are any x-intercepts. Yes. Two real roots mean two x-intercepts. So we know this graph is going to cup up and it's going to cross the x-axis in two locations. And we know it cups up. I don't know if you remember this from at the very beginning of chapter four, but if the leading coefficient is positive, it cups up. If the number in front of x squared is negative, then it cups down. But this will still tell you the number of intercepts. So now it says, okay, you say there's two x intercepts, find them. Well, the very first thing you learn, or one of the first things you learn in 092, is anytime you're finding the x intercept, you make y zero. And anytime you're finding the y intercept, you make x zero. That's because all the points on the x axis have y zero. One zero, two zero, three zero, four zero, five zero. So the minute I see this, this is what I write down as my reminder. Oh yeah, don't forget, make y zero. So from back in your 09 days or high school days, you should know this is y. Function notation is what we use in place of y. So that means make y zero. So this is our new problem. And here we are back at chapter four. Again, remember when I told you that was our most important chapter of the semester? How many times have I said, oh, this problem's from chapter four. Oh, this problem's from chapter four. Well, here it is again. This problem's from chapter four. If you have a quadratic second degree equation set equal to zero, you first try and solve by factoring. And it's double bubble. Are there factors of eight that subtract to two? Yes, there are, four and two. This says the signs are different. This says the largest one's plus. So positive 4, negative 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So then we plug them in. x plus 4, x minus 2. And then using another thing we learned in chapter 4, if a times b equals 0, either a is 0, let's go up here, or b is 0. So solve for x, I get x equals negative 4. Solve for x over here, add 2 to both sides, I get x equals 2. And the next thing, hopefully you remember from 09 or your high school classes, is intercepts are points. They're the point where the graph, or points where the graph crosses the x-axis. So that's why I always write this to help me get the points. x is negative 4 y is 0. So I know my first x -act intercept is negative 4, 0. And then this one would be x is 2, y is 0, 2, 0. So now I know the exact two places where that graph crosses the x-axis. Just from setting y equal to 0, because every x-intercept has y equals 0, and then solving using all your methods we've learned this semester. Okay, last but not least, we're going to find the y-intercept. That one doesn't hardly take any work. All you have to remember is, oh, y-intercept means make x zero. So you always set the other letter zero whenever you're finding intercepts. So I have my y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. There's my equation. This means set all the x's equal to 0. So we have 0 plus 0 minus 8. y equals negative 8. But again, this is an intercept, so your answer needs to be written as a point. That's why I always put that there. Then I don't have to think, what's the point? What's the point? I have my x. I have my y. I'm done. Ding, 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 ding. Boom. 
So there's the 2x. So now I know this point is 0, negative 8 when I go to graph it. So that gives me my two places it crosses the x-axis. This gives me the one place it crosses the y. And I have a pretty good parabola after those three points are in. So now would be a good time to turn off the video. Try number 10 on your own because this is 20 out of 100 points on your test. So this is a big part of your test is finding the intercepts and graphing. So I would try one on your own right now and then turn it back on and you can check with me. Okay, find the discriminant. So we have a is 1, b is negative 14, and c is 49. So we want to find b squared minus 4ac to see what kind of graph we're dealing with. Is it going to have 1x-intercept? Is it going to have 2x-intercepts? Is it going to have no x-intercepts? So b is a negative. Remember what we said earlier, it must be in parentheses or your calculator will give you the wrong answer when you type it in. So anytime the input's negative, put it in parentheses. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 49. And let's go ahead and type that in. <clears throat> So parentheses, negative 14, close parentheses, hit your squared, minus 4 times 1 times 49. Zero! Boom! So what does zero mean? When you add zero to something and then you subtract zero to something, you get the same number twice. So that's called one double rational root. And remember, that's what they want to know. So that means 1x intercept. So 1x intercept. So I can already picture what my line's going to look like. Line. I can't believe I said line. I was doing 092 notes earlier today. So I was in the line mode. So we know the parabola is going to cross the x-axis once. We know the leading coefficient's positive, which means it's going to cup up. So I already know my parabola is going to look like this. Don't know where it crosses the y yet i'll find that but i can do a brief sketch and know that it's going to look like this one x intercept means the it probably has to sit on the x-axis to only have one leading coefficient positive means it cups up so now let's go ahead and find that so that's the answer to this one find if there are any x-intercepts now it says, okay, go ahead and find the x-intercept. So the minute I see that word, I write this because that tells me what to do. So I go up to my equation. This is my y, and I make it 0. 0 equals x squared minus 14x plus 49. So you're back in Chapter 4 again. Sign same, both negative. The only way to get a positive is a negative times a negative or a positive times a positive. That tells me to use two negatives. And factors of 49 that add to 14 are 7 and 7. And if a times b equals 0, either a is 0 or b is 0. And you see we're going to get the same number twice for answers. And isn't that what we knew was going to happen? Because it says one double. I know I'm going to get two solutions. All quadratics have two solutions. But this is telling me they're going to be the same number. So x equals 7. 
and x equals 7.